Okay, welcome to the show, everybody. We are we are nice and live here on Twitch, and this audio sounds great, so we're good to go. Um, thank you for everyone joining Twitch this morning. Um, we've got a really good action-packed session um, for the like, next three hours of your calendar, basically, um, where we're going to be going through and building an application, essentially from scratch, um, that'll end up being all in Microsoft Dreams, using Microsoft Graph, using all the new APIs, demonstrating a lot of bot framework capability, um, as well as kind of progressive web, app, web apps, and then closing out with a bit of a show and tell and discussion with Yuna Arenas, who's the group program manager for Microsoft Graph, my boss as well. Um, and so it'd be good just to kind of get her on to talk about what she thinks are the highlights from, uh, from within side of build. And so what we wanted to do to start with was just introduce ourselves and, and then kind of show kind of the end result what's baked already in the oven, and then kind of delete all that and go again from scratch. Um, and so I'll go first, I guess. Um, my name is Jeremy Thake. I'm a principal program manager in the Microsoft Graph team. Um, I've been in the team now for two years. I, I boomerang backed to Microsoft. I was at a startup for two years um, before that. And then I was in um, Microsoft for three years before that with my, uh, in a more of a marketing developer role. Um, now being an engineer is nice because I get to be close to the, the dev keyboard, which is nice. Nicola's laughing as if like, <laughs> dev keyboard. Nicola, do you want to introduce yourself to everyone? Now I've kind of... Yes. So I'm a giraffe, uh, but in my free time, I'm also a uh, software engineer at Microsoft working on the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Uh, and when I can, uh, you know, talking to, to developers and building some cool stuff. And I'm really excited to show all this other stuff that we have today. It's going to be three hours, and I don't have to go to the bathroom at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. The, the, I mean, dry cleaners aren't open, so that thing's going to smell for a bit, but we'll be good. It's, you know, just deal with it. Mm. I'll send you one of Scarlet's diapers or something. You'll be grand. Uh, Nicola, do you want to, uh, Beth, do you want to introduce yourself too? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I actually just joined Nicola's team to uh, help drive the developer satisfaction and adoption on the toolkit. Um, been at Microsoft for a couple years now. Um, this is actually my first time on Build, so very excited about this. Um, <laughs> be more excited about this. <laughs> I'm so happy we could share this experience with you. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be awesome. So I think the best way to do this is just to tease on exactly what we're going to be building out to show like the value up front. And it's kind of a weird way of doing it, but um, I think it helps with the way we're going to go through this journey of building it. So Nicola, do you want to take the stage and show what the end result is? Of course. Let me share my screen real quick here. Great. Okay. Uh, so this is Teams. I think everyone knows Teams already, but the idea here is that we're going to create a uh, an application that's going to help us do small team breakouts, small group breakouts and meetings. So just to demo kind of the end-to-end -end result, uh, we have this hand-washing meeting where we'll learn about meeting. There's about 10 people in this meeting, could be hundreds of people because everyone needs to know how to wash their hands. Anyway, I'm going to join this meeting uh, as myself, and actually I'm going to ask both of you guys to join the meeting as well. That way we can, I'm not by myself in here. And while you do that, while they join us, I'll show you the application that we have. It's called Moderator. It's beautiful, I think. Anyway, Super um, beautiful. Yeah. you can see the different events I have going on today, tomorrow, and the online events I can actually moderate. So I'm gonna click on moderate. And this allows me to actually split up all the attendees in that meeting into group sizes. So I can do, let's see, I have done three people per group. Actually, let's do three people. Three groups is good. I'm gonna create the breakouts. So what this is actually gonna do in the background is gonna use the Microsoft Graph to generate a team on Teams. And it's gonna create several channels for each group in that, that team. It's also gonna create a new online meeting per group. So that way everybody in that group can join a separate meeting and then get a notification that they can join that meeting. So let's see here. So Beth's in this call right now. I'm not sure if Jeremy's Hi. coming there. I, I'm oh, in you too. Are? Yeah. Okay. If you click the people thing in the bottom right, you can see it. Oh, I yeah, think it's the web Jeremy. view. You just see the one. Yeah. There. So if you... Now I'm just more it's important. Created, <laughs> it's prioritized you, Beth. Sorry, Jeremy. <laughs> So if I go to Teams here, you'll see here we have this hand-washing breakouts now team that got created, and we have these three different uh, channels. For example, group two, 
you know, it, it contains Sabella and Milan and Vesa. If I go to group one, let's find one where you folks are in. So Justin, Jeremy is in here, and Beth. Oh, both of you in the same team. Um, so if you want to show your screen, Jeremy, you'll see what people see in yours. So you can actually join. Oh, yeah. So if I just jump over to mine here and just share my experience, um, I have uh, my activities here, and you can see that um, it's saying, hi, everyone, and he's in his draft suit even in here too. Um, <laughs> and I can join the meeting, but it will tell me that only Justin, me, and Beth are in that. So when I click on that, um, it's going to join that meeting. I'm already in a meeting. You can be in two. I didn't know this. That was the one that we started, which was like everyone in the team. Um, but now I can actually say I want to join the, that breakout room there. And um, if we look, um, you'll see that uh, Beth will be able to jump in and join that one too. Um, and then they'll, we can do our normal breakouts. Um, and so that's just kind of the experience that you know you get from being right. in the activity feed and so forth. And now I can actually send you a message. So if you want to show my screen back, uh, yep. when we created this, uh, this uh, groups, now we have this option to send messages to all of them to bring, kind of bring them back. So for example, I can say, hey, group name, you have, I don't know, you have one minute left here, and I can send this message. And then everybody in their channels and their live, um, live meetings will be able to kind of get that, uh, that message. If I kind of join this meeting, and if I see the... Oh, somebody said no. <laughs> it says, you know, they got the, hey, group one, you have, you know, one minute left and you need to join the main meeting here. You kind of get back to it. So it kind of has that um, whole motivation experience in there where once you create the group, so you can actually message to the people and kind of bring them all back in there. Because we, we all also know actually, like when you're trying to re return people to groups, they're all like chatting in the corners and they're, they're in their, their zone. And so this helps right. just to kind of pull them all back into that main group because you can't just walk over to them if it's all virtual, right? Exactly. Um, we also also created this as a Teams application as well. So if I go to my Teams apps, this is now running as a Teams application. You can see here it kind of looks like, an, like a, it's part of Teams. And if I moderate, I can moderate this, uh, this application directly from within Teams. Um, in fact, this is also an event. Let me close this. It's also an event, uh, a, a group application. So if I go to my chats, if I find the hand washing kind of chat here, you can see here we also added the application as a tab, which goes directly into um, the uh, options to to moderate uh, this thing. And I'm hoping that people haven't jumped on my Ngrok and they're slowing it down and that's why it's taking so long. <laughs> hey, <laughs> look, it, it can't be any worse than me being on a stage. This is a few years ago now, but they deleted my SharePoint site collection right before or like right into my session. And I went to do my first demo like five minutes in and of course it couldn't find the site collection. And fortunately, I worked out what someone had done and they waved in the audience and gave me a thumbs up. And I was like, yeah, that's that's not cool on stage. I don't think anyone's been that yeah. quick with Ngrok. No, I don't think so. Maybe something I forgot to kind of set up. But I mean, we'll show how to do that actually later in the session and how to actually set this up and how this works. So we'll show it there. And the final thing I wanted to actually show that we're going to do at the end is show how to make this into a PWA. So you notice we have this install button here in the corner, that awesome install button. So when I click that uh, install button, it's going to throw an error. So what you need to do is to go back to localhost 3000 and then I'm going to click install. And um, we're going to wave, hand wave our things so that nothing happened there. And if I can click install, this is going to install it as a uh, PWA. So it looks and feels like a native application. I can search through it in my start menu. It has the awesome icon. And I can even install this on my phone. So I have an Android app here. Mm -hmm. And I can also install it as a PWA on my mm -hmm. phone and looks and acts as an actual application on my phone. So we'll show how to do that as well uh, towards the end of the show. That's fancy. pretty cool. That is very yeah. fancy. And then, <laughs> Beth, do you want to show even more fancy stuff? Oh, I got the more fancy stuff. I think so. Here, let me pull up um, both the app and the team side by side. So um, on top of the all the views that Nicola already showed you, we also built a bot using Microsoft Bot Framework um, that you can deploy to your custom teams or chats or... Uh, you know, just using it as an app. Uh, what it does is if you are, I actually haven't added to the Teams yet. This is just a moderator itself. If you use um, keyword QQ, which when I wrote it, I meant it for question Q. Uh, 
and I was told it's the same as quick question. But your question can be like long as well if you want to. And say, what is, how about how awesome is the live coding session? Then this is going to um, connect with our bot. Um, there's a whole series of events happening in the background that it triggers Azure Functions and it broadcasts it to uh, uh, Signal Hub. And then all the subscribers, including our moderator app, will get the updates. Now you can see right here at the bottom of the queue, it says, how awesome is the live coding session? Yay. Very awesome. So an <laughs> So another thing that we could do is as moderators, when you're in this app and looking at the questions that people are asking, you could say, oh, the next question, you know, in breakout one that I'm going to announce it, um, let's say I have the most questions. Let's just say Jeremy said, where are you from? Um, asking the speakers. <laughs> in that, in that and then voice. I'm going to click answer. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to click answer and this will pop the question back to the chat. And then his question will disappear in the queue. And then th uh, that will also be marked as answered in the database that's connected to, I mean, Azure Cosmos BD, uh, DB to be specific. So that's the gist of the bot that we're going to show um, towards the end of the session, how to build this and um, all the information related to it that you can, hopefully you can get more information on the bot framework. That's awesome. So we need to like get everyone going. So Nicola, do you want to share your screen and show them where this stuff is on GitHub? Or actually, maybe I need to do that because I have the keys. Is that true? Do you have the keys Up to, to you. live? I have it, yeah, I think yeah, I do. Yeah, you should totally do it. You should totally okay, do it. Okay, let me do it. Yeah, let, let me do it. Give me the option yeah, to do this. You, you've wrote the majority, <laughs> majority of the actual code. Anyway, so um, the actual the sample is private right now. You can see it right there. It says private, but it's going to be on Microsoft Graph slash meeting dash moderator sample. And if I go to settings, uh, all the way down, I can make this public right now. I don't have to type this whole thing. I'm, I'm going to post going it to into the them. chat. And now, so the benefit here is, is that as we're walking through this, you can go poke I'll look at my password. <laughs> uh, you and can go there it is. Now it's it. live and have a look. Um, there was a question in the chat says, uh, can we get the conversation history that is happening in conversation group using application-wide access tokens? Well, let me, uh, so we're live with the GitHub and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen now. And just as to tackle that, the best way to kind of answer those types of questions is if we go into graph.microsoft.com and over into the API reference, um, we can go over into teamwork and I'm, guessing that this still may be in beta only um, is that when we go into teamwork, we can look for the chat messages and the chat. Now he specifically said um, conversation group. So we talk about things as in one on one messages or one to end messages, which is like if I went over into teams and Basically, you know, created the chat here. This is like a chat message where I could add Nicola and I could add Beth and say hi. Or there's this notion of channel messages, which is inside of a team, those group channels here. Um, so with that approach, we can just basically see that we can get the list channel messages inside of here. And I, if you don't know where it is in the table of contents, I can, you know, you can just basically type in channel message and it will show it and you'll see here that for permissions we can either do it as the user which we'll go into a lot of detail later on or as the application and here are the permissions that you can use um, and then here's how you call it with our rest api and we'll go a little bit more detail around how all that works later on but um we'll try and keep up with those questions as we go through as long as it kind of makes sense that one probably didn't make sense to go straight out of the gate with but um, we're all learning here on how we're going to handle this stuff as questions come through so um, hey, that's what a live show does, you know. All right. I mean, yeah. We're going to keep to our time schedule. 